Hey everyone, Robert here, author of Expansion Mastery, the practical guide to living a fully engaged life. Are you ready to start living your life to the fullest? Are you ready to start living normal life again, where we can go out and interact with one another and exercise our natural human rights and liberties? Then welcome, my friends, to The Fully Engaged Life. Welcome back to the show, everyone. I hope this episode finds you doing very well. This unprecedented time in human history allows me to observe the state of things in several ways, and I would like to share some of those observations in how they pertain to our spiritual evolution. In past episodes, I've covered the topic of freedom and how that pertains to spiritual practices and spiritual growth itself. When we expand spiritually, there is a newfound sense of freedom. When we truly become authentic, there is a greater sense of freedom as we Let go of clinging and attachments, there is a greater sense of freedom. As we become free of the ego, there is a greater sense of freedom. It has been my experience that almost every spiritual practice results in an increasing sense of personal freedom. And this brings me to today's topic, because with that freedom comes a sense of personal responsibility. So I would like to illustrate the point of this freedom and responsibility in regards to what's going on today, because it's so bizarre that it allows us to have an incredibly dynamic example right before our eyes that all of us are living at the same time. This means that all of us can relate to what is going on around us, thereby providing the perfect example to work with. Because any time we engage spiritual practices, authentic practices that allow us to go through certain types of self-transformation, our eyes are opened just a little bit wider to this sense of responsibility that is required of us. I have often stated that many of the people, hundreds of people that I have guided through spiritual practices over the years, when met with this sense of personal responsibility, have turned tail and run from the specific practices, from spirituality itself. Because so many people are afraid to accept this responsibility. Well, without this sense of responsibility, you cannot awaken. You won't even be able to make it through basic to intermediate level meditative practices without accepting an increasing degree of self-responsibility. Here's an example of what I mean by this, and I've used this in the past because it is incredibly basic, but even more than that, it it is foundational, and we can see this and understand it analytically to some degree. So, as we engage our mind and we start to get control of our thoughts, not to mention our emotions and then the subsequent vibrations, but... As we engage our thoughts, we know that our thoughts create our reality, and we know our thoughts and emotions are interacting with the universal source through vibrational frequency, and that indeed attracts certain things into our life, right, into our experience. 
So one of the things we have to understand is that we are creating our life in this way through this sort of uh, attraction and manifestation, whether we are conscious of it or unconscious of it. See, it doesn't matter. It's happening either way. And through spiritual practices, we learn how to be very conscious of that. Well, there's an implied contract associated with that, which states that we then have to accept the responsibility for our thoughts and the vibration that they are sending out and interacting with the universe. See? So when we're totally asleep and unaware that that's going on, we just kind of bumble through life. This is one of the aspects uh, of sleepwalking through life is you're just unaware. You're ignorant of what's going on. And that doesn't mean you're stupid. Ignorant means you're just unaware. You don't know what you don't know. So you just kind of go through life thinking things happen to you and there's coincidence and all these things. And your life is out of your control. And through spiritual practices... We engage the mind in a way that allows us to gain control of our thoughts. And in so doing, we understand that by gaining control of our thoughts, that we are consciously aware of everything that is going on and we are responsible for the life experience that we are attracting and manifesting that ultimately becomes what we perceive as reality. Now, upon understanding this, a lot of people turn and retreat because they don't want to have to claim responsibility for everything that goes on in their life. They don't want to have to claim responsibility for themselves and their life experience. They'd rather just bumble through life, allowing things to happen to them instead of you happening to your life and your experience of reality. See, so in one way, this frees us from things just happening to us all the time, and it allows us to enjoy that sense of freedom from these external, supposedly random circumstances that keep happening to us. We understand that, no, I am actually causing them to some degree, whether I am aware of it or not, and... Through that, we say, okay, well, then I have to take responsibility for the things I think because I am responsible. I alone am responsible for that. And those things that I think are then going to be reflected in my perception of reality and in my life experience. I can't hand the wheel to anybody else because I alone am driving through this experience. So we can see then how when we attain a greater sense of freedom, it comes with the price of self-responsibility. But that self-responsibility also comes with an incredible benefit of self-empowerment. It's pretty incredible when you reach a state where you are conscious of most every single thing you think, of all of your emotions, of the things you say, how you say them, and the actions you take in life. When all of those things are done with a sense of mindfulness, and remember, mindfulness is the primary foundation that allows us to attain these things. When you can do that, it offers you a tremendous sense of self-empowerment because now you know you're in charge of things. And I have illustrated this to friends, family, students, clients, how I can actually do this and they can see this happening in real time. It's been amazing to be able to do that. And there is certainly nothing special about me. If I can do it, you can do it as well. The only real difference between myself and those who ultimately fail at this sort of thing is that I have accepted that sense of responsibility completely, whereas they have chosen not to do so. It's too much for them. But as you let go of the ego a little more and a little more, you don't feel such a sense of pressure on yourself for that. You you actually can laugh at yourself when you see something happen. You think a certain thought and then something comes around and kind of bites you in the butt, right? And you can laugh and go, oh, 
I just did that to myself. I did it to myself. And it's funny, and you learn from it at the same time. But when you still have a lot of ego going, then you take all this stuff way too seriously. You take yourself and, and, and your experience too seriously. So then it becomes a threatening thing, and you get frustrated, and you feel like you failed, and all of these other negative type emotions that are completely unnecessary. And then your mind tricks you into believing that it's just a lot easier to pretend that it doesn't exist. Easy example, right? So making an observation in accordance to the times that we are in. We have multiple facets of this kind of thing going on right now. So I'd like to break them down. Let's look at one area. And this is in regards to spirituality and even religion, organized religion. And this is one way you can tell who is authentic and who is fake. So in a challenging time like this, anyone who is engaging in authentic spiritual practices is accepting self-responsibility. Those who are either failed by whatever form of so-called spirituality or religion they are practicing, or the spirituality or religion they have failed, are resisting taking any form of self-responsibility. How do we see this? Look at how many people are refusing to work now because they're going to sit home on their sofa and do nothing in order to collect government money. They want the government to take care of them. People that are more awakened don't care about that. They don't care about the government money. If they get a little bonus, fine. If not, they don't care. Why? Because they are self-sufficient and they'd rather be out there in the world making their way, making their own living, doing what they love to do, or at least doing something that allows them to have a sense of personal accomplishment than sit on their butt and take handouts from corrupt politicians. And again, beliefs come into this. We also see those people who are not enslaved by their beliefs. And they're able to move through this thing with a greater sense of acceptance for what's going on. Those who don't want to claim any sense of self-responsibility cling to their beliefs. And these beliefs, such as, you know, this, this hatred for Trump, for example. And again, I'm a political atheist, just like Gerald Salente. I don't care about any of them. But if we use this as an example, these people are willing to forego any rights and liberties and freedom in order to be right because they have this burning hatred for somebody. And more importantly than that, they have this burning desire to be right about him. So they want it to be that way so bad. They're going to do everything they can to make it that way. And it's so easy to have those false beliefs supported by the mainstream propaganda. So see, it's very easy to engage in that and not have to see the truth. Seeing through all of this facade requires a tremendous amount of self-responsibility and acceptance. And it's much more difficult on those of us who do that in these times than those who resist it. Those who just blindly follow this political narrative because they think that it, it reinforces their beliefs. See, when we become free of beliefs, which I have discussed in my book and previous podcasts, again, we attain a sense of tremendous freedom, but that comes with a sense of responsibility. And it's a sense of a responsibility that a lot of people are incapable of accepting. It's too frightening in, in instances such as this that we are in right now. And when the ego is inflated to these unsustainable levels that I've discussed, then what we are left with is 
people who will do anything to validate their beliefs and get the outcome that they want to happen so badly that they will sacrifice anything and anyone around them in order for that to take place. Once again, it is a lot easier to allow yourself to form these concrete beliefs than it is to free yourself of such things and acknowledge reality as it is. And this is one of the situations that we have gotten ourselves into that I've been warning about for several years now. Let's use this hashtag Me Too supposed movement thing, right? If we look at this, we can see what's happening now in, in this sense of twisted duality that I talked about in a previous podcast. Right back in 2018, everybody was screaming about how Kavanaugh was guilty, right? And he's guilty until proven innocent. And we need to believe all women. And he doesn't deserve any due process. That shouldn't apply here, right? We had all the politicians, all the activists screaming that from the rooftops. We were flooded with that propaganda throughout 2018 and even beyond. And then it started to go down a little bit. Now, here we are two years later in 2020. And Biden is being accused of all the same things by women, more credibly so. And yet they're all acting as though they don't even acknowledge that. Or they, these, some of these politicians are coming out and just saying, eh, we, we don't care. Hey, we don't care about it. it. It's fine in this instance. See this double standard, this state of bipolar duality? This is what the ego is doing so that it can't be wrong. The ego will never accept that it's wrong, especially when it is inflated to an unsustainable level. This level is mental illness. And that goes far beyond being hypocritical, which it definitely is. But it is a form of mental illness. The ego cannot be wrong. And this is a very, very dangerous place to be because it's a short leap from here to a padded cell. So once again, I don't care about this party or that party or this person. I don't care about any of that. But it does provide us a very clear example that we can observe in order to see what is actually happening free of our own beliefs with a pure sense of perception. And then we have the fear-based factor, right? That people have gotten incredibly comfortable. Yeah, let's go with comfortable in life. And therefore, they are more fearful. Now, as the ego continues to inflate, your fear will grow. Okay, Fear comes from the ego. So now we have this virus and we have all the the fear propaganda being shoved down our throat every single day. And even though a lot of this has been outrightly, verifiably disproven as complete hokum, people are still clinging to it as though it was true. They, they want to believe it because... The the ego has them addicted to the fear, right? There's a chemical release from this fear that gives you a rush. And that's when people feel alive. So they bask in the fear and the drama and the ego just eats it up. So instead of accepting this greater sense of self-responsibility to think for themselves, to research for themselves, to be open-minded and see what is truly happening in the world, they choose to buy into the fear. They choose to remain willfully ignorant to the truth. And this is their choice. Some of these people are just so totally asleep they have no idea. And others are awake enough to know better, but they are actually choosing to remain ignorant of the truth in favor of the the rush from the fear and all the drama that they get to bask in and the chance to sit on their butt 
and get money for doing nothing. They don't care that their human rights and liberties are being stripped. Every single day, they're losing more and more. We all are. Whether we choose to be consciously aware of it or not, we can see the way they are grabbing all of our rights. But those who are addicted to the fear and the drama, they don't care because they're getting their fix. And that's all they care about. They don't care about the other stuff. And then we have those that are entitled and just want government to take care of them. They feel that they are owed. Let me explain something about being a human being. No one owes any of us anything at all, period. You are not owed anything because of anything that has gone on. And those who have decided to accept responsibility for themselves and their life know this, accept it, and deal with it. They work through it. It's life. There's no guarantee that our life is supposed to be easy. It's life. It's unpredictable. It's challenging. It's an adventure. But this sense of entitlement that people have developed has them believing that they deserve something. They want something for free. They want their handouts. They want their their school loans dismissed. They want free schooling. They want free health care. They want free everything. Nothing in life is free. At some point, somewhere down the road, someone has to pay for it. Who exactly do you think that's going to be? But these people don't care. Because they don't want to have to accept responsibility for themselves. They don't want to have to go out and make their way in the world. They don't want to have to try hard. They don't want to have to work hard. They don't want to have to strive. They want handouts. They want to feel that they can get over on somebody. That they're getting over on the system. They're getting over on other people. They're getting over. They're getting something for free. They're getting theirs, right? So it doesn't matter how religious or spiritual you claim to be. If you are one of those people, guess what? You have failed your religion or spirituality, or it has failed you, one of the two. Yet people hide behind such things to allow their ego to create the belief that they are so noble and good people and doing the right thing, when in reality that is not the case. When we are self-reliant, when we accept self-responsibility, when we accept the responsibility for ourself and our lives. That's the only time we are authentic and that's when we are empowered. Entitlement equals disempowerment. We see this in the spiritual statement, expect nothing and appreciate everything. Right? This is saying that. Stop expecting. When you are entitled, you have expectations. You expect to get handouts. You expect to be cared for. You expect not to have to pay for anything. Right? That's the idea. And we understand that when we stop having these sorts of expectations and even expectations of others, which was a hard lesson I had to learn over the years myself. As I was going through these practices, um, we can then accept and appreciate our own sense of freedom, our own sense of responsibility, and we can appreciate anything that we do get, right? So if you do get a surprise check in the mail, all right, bonus score. Well, that's nice, but I'm not going to sit on my butt and expect it. Instead, I'm going to be out there making my way in the world. I'm going to earn what I have. Remember that? You're either in the asset column in society or you're in the liability column. Those who are in the asset column are the ones who accept self-responsibility. Those who are entitled and choose not to engage in any sort of self-responsibility or responsibility for their life, you're in the liability column. So it's really funny to me when I hear all of these entitled people, the ones pushing the entitlement programs and the socialism and communism and all of these other things and and the free schooling and the free health care and the free everything. And yet and yet they claim to be quote unquote woke. Being woke is fake. They have taken the 
Buddhist idea of being awakened, and they inverted it, they twisted it by calling it woke to mean something else to these people who are the farthest thing from being awakened. And now from the examples I provided, you can clearly understand how. You can see this in others now. And more importantly, you can look at yourself. We will stay on the path of awakening. And even though it's a Buddhist concept, we don't have to be Buddhist to engage it, to strive for it. We can attain it regardless. But you can see they've done this in different points in history, and it seems to be quite commonly Buddhist concepts and symbolism that's used. Look at, look at uh, Hitler and the Nazis, right? The symbol they used is the swastika. They actually took a Buddhist symbol and they flipped it in order to make their symbol. They did the same thing. We look at uh, these satanic politicians today and how they have twisted the idea of karma. Basically, karma is a law of cause and effect. If I do something bad to you, then I should expect something bad to come back to me, either in this lifetime or the next. They have twisted this to be, okay, if I'm going to do something bad to you and you don't stop me, then the bad karma goes on you because I told you I was going to do it and you just chose to let me do it, so shame on you. Um, that goes on you. That is twisted. See, this is how these people take these, these pure spiritual concepts Concepts and they twist them, they invert them to have their own meaning. They have done the same thing with awakening and their completely ignorant woke thing that they're pushing on everybody. What does woke actually mean? That not only are you still asleep, and chances are willfully so, but you're also very well programmed, conditioned, and brainwashed. So I don't know about any of you guys, but I'll pass on the whole woke thing. And I'll still strive for awakening. Thank you. So as you engage in various spiritual practices, and right now is a wonderful time because everything is in such a state of being hyperdynamic that it's really easy to see and understand things right now. So as you engage in mindfulness practices, meditative practices, you will come to find rather quickly that with certain practices, it's going to offer you an incredible sense of freedom. And with each step, a little more freedom and a little more freedom, it feels incredible. And you will also notice that along with that, there is a increase in sense of responsibility you will be required to take for yourself and your life. And yes, this requires courage. And that's why I tell people we need to have a warrior spirit to truly engage spiritual practices. We have to have that inner strength. We have to be strong enough, courageous enough to accept these responsibilities. Because without them, we are not awakening. We are not living a fully engaged life at all. So this is a chance for all of us to ask ourselves, Am I accepting responsibility for myself and my life? Because at the end of the day, no one's going to come to save you. No one's going to come to save me. We have to save ourselves. So then we have to take responsibility for ourselves and our lives, right? Do I have enough food for myself and my family? Do I have uh, enough money on hand for myself and my family to get by? Do I have a reliable vehicle? Do we have water? Do we have the things we need to live and get by even when things can get incredibly challenging like they are now? If you have accepted responsibility, then you have yourself set up at least to some degree for that sort of thing. And even if we look at this virus itself, I will accept responsibility for my own health and I will go out and I will live my life. I'm not going to stay locked up out of fear, especially irrational fear, but any fear at all. I'd rather take my chances out in life, actually living Instead of waiting for someone to come and take care of me and give me handouts and tell me it's okay. 
So believe me, as you engage in spiritual practices, you will definitely know that there is a dramatic increase in the amount of responsibility that you are accepting. With the success of each practice, you will go through the realization that you have to accept responsibility for yourself and your life experience to a higher and higher degree. But I'll tell you, it's nothing difficult. It's nothing frightening. It's the way we were meant to live as human beings. And as we become more awakened human beings, it becomes easier because we don't take it all so seriously. Sometimes you just have to laugh at yourself and life itself. All right, please visit me at www.expansionmastery.com. Just posted a new blog article there the other day. Make sure and check that out if you're interested in learning how to unplug uh, not only from tech, but from the programming that the tech is implementing. Um, Check that out. And while you're there, grab an autographed copy of Expansion Mastery. You can grab the ebook. I'm still working on getting the, the files together for this. Uh, breath mastery program so hang in there it will be worth it i promise and please continue to support us by doing all the social media thing liking sharing subscribing things like that and in the near future you will also be able to find expansion mastery on patreon bit shoot and library in order to avoid all of the censorship Till next time, my friends, I wish you the very best in your practices and your life. Stay strong and take care. <laughs>